Hey everyone, this is the post Collab Talk Tweet Jam interview, and I'm talking today with Matt. How's it going? Doing well. How are you? I'm doing well. And we had a great <laughs> conversation yesterday on oversight and governance of the power platform. This is like a really hot topic, you know, yeah. the the G word around power platform and what can be done around that. And I think I'm as I'm getting ready to head out to uh, Europe for a conference. I think there's multiple sessions on governance and power platform related. So important topic. What's kind of your background? Why don't you introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, my name is Matt Varney. I'm the uh, internet administrator at uh, KCTCS, which is an acronym for the Kentucky Community and Technical College System. So I'm in higher ed um, and I uh, am SharePoint mostly background, but I've uh, been doing more and more on the power platform and uh, as sort of in the system office, the, uh, the central headquarters, I guess, of case TCS were in charge of a lot of the, of the, the governance type of things. So um, trying to wrap my head around power platform governance ourselves. Well, and I and I know we've all got opinions uh, about this. We've seen the this governance scenario play out uh, before with other systems, other platforms. And so there's certainly some things that are nuanced that are different about Power Platform, but uh, when it comes down to it, I think it's it's the same stuff again that we dealt with with the SharePoint world and other tools and technologies prior to that. Well, why don't we kick things off? I mean, the first question, love to get your thoughts around this. How important is it to have a governance strategy in place before employees start building Power Platform solutions? <laughs> well, that'd be ideal. Um, but that's often unrealistic. Uh, and a really uh, classic answer depends on your organization, right? And the, and the users they're in. But people are going to are going to go out and try stuff uh, as soon as they see a button for it. So uh, if you wait to have uh, to release that before you, if you try to build a governance program and all the the nuances therein before you expose that button, uh, you might be waiting a while. I'm afraid. Yeah, I mean that's always the difficult. It's the it's the uh, uh, you know, do do you go and try and build out a plan with all the the detail? Uh, it, it's not going to make sense. It's not going to fit. I mean, you can always go and leverage best practices, the learnings of experts mm -hmm. and others that are out there. Um, but to some degree, you have to figure out what's unique about you know what needs to be in place for your organization. But there are some basics. I mean, there's yeah. there's a lot of guidance that's out there on what to go and do and what kind of cover that with the COE discussion yeah. as well. Is there a question too, is there a preferred methodology or framework for power platform governance? Well, again, kind of depends, but yeah, I think uh, 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 the common thread that runs through a lot of organizations is um, sort of a layered approach and understanding first the scope of what you're, what any given solution in the platform is going to do um, and who's involved and how wide ranging that is how durable it needs to be so if you think about the layered approach of individual productivity boosts and with your own power automates that you run personally for your stuff requires maybe a little less governance uh versus something that's gonna be uh, running a process uh, that's for the enterprise and needs to live on <laughs> perhaps if you go away um so then absolutely needs more, more governance on that so starts with understanding the scope of the solution and then a layered approach on that. Then for those larger ones, <clears throat> when you do introduce <clears throat> more governance, excuse me, I think there's a, a common approach to to have a service account strategy around those. So you use a dedicated licensed service account to build and enable and all the connectors um, within that solution so that it can live on beyond the individual. And that's really important for an organization like mine with a huge turnover <laughs> a lot of our users are transit and higher ed they're here for a semester and so if they do something and it's great for a semester and then they move on if that great thing stops working <laughs> get start over so um understanding that impact uh is really lays the foundation for building your governance program i think i know most especially the larger organizations that i've worked for have a you know a kind of a change management process that generically across that for any new application, any new mm -hmm. systems that's deployed. And so there's that kind of review process. But there's also, I know consulting companies that have 
you know, methodologies. They walk in, they go into a new customer. And so they, they say, here's our experience, kind of insert this process the way that we've doing and that, that learning. But both of those kind of, to your point, are, are uh, an iterative process mm -hmm. to, to look at and understand, well, what are the differences, the nuances of the culture of this organization? How is it being used? Um, but then there are certain, uh, the list of best, certainly list of best practices, like you said, service-based accounts, having that process in place. I don't know, that's a framework or a methodology. There are just certain things that, how we approach these new systems. Again, a lot of organizations have those kinds of things, those to have those learnings in place. But there are certainly, uh, you know, Microsoft, I think even tries to stay out of the specific methodology, uh, you know, world and just says, here are best practices, here are things that we see that are common, here are recommendations, how you go and whether you build a methodology, your consulting company and want to build this as a practice area to help companies go and do, it's entirely up to you how you go and deploy that. Yeah, or even internally within your own organization, so uh, yeah. <laughs> So do you have any best practices for monitoring, auditing, securing, and managing Power Platform solutions? No, um, sort of uh, on your previous point too, is one of the key elements of, of all this is a strong user community um, and uh, the, the practitioners, the makers out there of these uh, solutions, getting all those people to talk with each other <laughs> in a community uh, is critical. And sort of out of that, you can you can um, find best practices. You know what exists, so you don't rebuild the thing in a different business unit or a different college or, or whatever. Um, and so uh, that I think is our direction, our overall direction. We don't have a lot of um, technical oversight, or uh, uh, you know, we don't have a COE running right now. Mm. Um, we don't have those kinds of oversight and automated monitoring of things. We're relying really on trying to build a community um and and let and leverage that are you, are, you find, are people self-reporting and sharing like uh, the, about their solutions or is it do you have kind of more of the lone wolf or is it just a combination of those things it's a combination it's a mixed bag um but as as more and more people are are self-reporting and others are taking advantage of that and saying oh i didn't know you could do xyz or i've been trying to do xyz have you done it over there um those communicate those conversations are starting to flow. Our user community just started the summer, and so um, it's only a few months old. And so we're we're slowly building. And that um, approach too is kind of a you would think it'd be more common in higher ed, uh, more collaborative, but it's not. <laughs> uh, there's there's still a lot of cultural issues around the shift to more open communications around things like that. But we're getting there. Yeah, I mean, are you doing, I'm just, I'm interested in this kind of sideways on this question, like whether, <laughs> as I know some organizations that are, you know, they might be monitoring their systems and see, hey, we're seeing even more usage of this, we're seeing more calls over to this data in these locations or requests for permissions for access on certain things. And so they're kind of identifying solutions that are being built that way. It's because it's not open up front, hey, we're building a solution, but mm -hmm. more of, we see the system is being taxed more in these ways. You know, are you again? Is that part of your process? Is kind of identifying those things and not a uh, intrinsic part. Although we do have, you know, we can do uh, audits after the fact, um, <laughs> uh, but we don't do a lot of in um, upfront um, and real time monitoring per se. But we do, we are able to sort of respond and sort of uh, see trends of requests from users about, hey, I, I need to do X, Y, Z. And they ask the GAs or somebody <laughs> about doing that, and then they can funnel that down to the community level. And, and we can feel, feel that question that way and sort of spread the message that way. So it's a mixed bag. I, I think it's great having your perspective. I know it's it's uh, it's it's always great when you, you like go to a conference or something and you're talking about like best practices and they they we they roll out the company that has done everything to the letter of what Microsoft recommends and uses that wonderful case study. And the the reality is that everybody is less than that is doing other other things. So have you? I'm just I'm interested is whether you've seen any impacts by not having those that detailed 
kind of tracking and, and auditing process in place as a proactive step versus later. Yeah, and there's been a, a few incidents where somebody has built something, again, Power Automate, or as most uh, common, something pretty fantastic, <laughs> and then they leave. And yeah. uh, it's that sort of abandoned and, and or stops functioning, and no one knows anything about it. <clears throat> so knowing that uh, at the time of inception would have been better. So we've had a few cases like that. Um, but yeah. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, the, the stuff just stops working. You're not sure why. Yeah. That's, uh, again, being, you know, both coming from the SharePoint world, and we saw this again and again, where your executive team, somebody's is like, oh, that's fantastic what you're doing. It's like, well, I, yeah, I, I did this kind of shadow IT effort. I didn't tell anybody about it. I went and installed it on a server under my desk, was running these things. Now everybody's relying on it. I'm out sick or I leave the organization and people are like, we can't even get access to this. What is this thing? Um, yeah, so there's a lot of reasons why you want to be, uh, you know, make it more open and transparent about the solutions. And mm -hmm. that's why you want to have that some governance model in place to be mm -hmm. able to, you know, not lose time and effort and have to recreate those things yeah. if it is exactly. useful. Exactly. Well, question four, specifically around security, how important are tenant and environmental data loss prevention policies and power platform governance? Is that something you guys look at? Yeah, I mean, uh, DLP is overall in general um, has been a, a good investment. And I, I kind of, Again, going back to the way we're approaching this, I, I look at those kinds of controls at the at the tenant level as a, a, an interesting development in uh, how shadow systems and uh, uh, you know traditional shadow systems is people built them or built or buy things and you wouldn't know anything about them, um, and that full of security holes and full of who knows what, right? If people are doing those kinds of approaches to innovation, we'll call it, <laughs> um, with uh, uh, building their own thing within the power platform, then that gets us one step closer to an integration with the rest of the, the world <laughs> um, by default. And then also being able to layer on things like DLP uh, on the on the data that it's connecting to and the, that source is connecting to. That's just a couple steps closer to helping us um, uh, know about these these shadow systems and sort of these new quasi shadow systems um, and then maybe eventually talk to the owner of that and get them into the more a more governed approach uh, yeah. grow that solution into a, a real thing um, more easily than than sort of whatever they downloaded from the interwebs <laughs> right well that, that again goes back to that that kind of layered approach to governance is uh is that you know, to your point if people are on solutions we don't even know what those things are we don't know where the data sits uh -huh. we have no visibility into what's in it where the data is it's going to be cloud-based it's going outside we don't know what's happening we don't have visibility mm -hmm. into that right. versus a build what you want but it, within the the, the, the yeah. this, this framework and we at least we have some basic uh -huh. security measures we can take and we can you know have some visibility over what you're doing mm -hmm. but still go solve your own problems don't mm -hmm. wait for it to solve it right. for you to right. go do it well that kind of plays into the next two questions around the community side so why should organizations leverage the power platform center of excellence starter kit uh again we don't have that right but i think it, it does have a um um we have looked at it and it uh does offer some promise it's not a silver bullet or um and 100% solution, but it, it does uh, seem to allow some of that additional layer, a level of visibility, um, and uh, and with some additional maybe you know controls and scripts and buttons and, and widgets that can help you uh, uh, connect all that stuff together a little better without having to rely on um, the, the goodness of the community, but. Yeah. Uh, I think I think even if even if we get around to and we still are looking at doing the COE, if and when we get around to doing the COE, um, we will still rely on the community as much as we can. And it's it's not a that's not a silver bullet. COE is not a silver bullet, but maybe combined we can yeah make some, make some progress. Well, that's the whole point. It's it's uh, having that that 
centralized location where you can then share, hey, here's what's going on. Here's what we're doing. Here's what we've learned. Here are things that are working well elsewhere so people can mm-hmm. go in. If you do nothing more, but go in, if it's treat it like a, like a catalog of, hey, here's what other people yeah. have done elsewhere. Hey, could I be able to leverage these solutions over in my organization? Right. And that that's, I think, my, one of my um, biggest, uh, mo- inter- most interesting parts of that is that catalog or that inventory, what's out there that's visible. Right now, that's sort of a manually maintained SharePoint list. <laughs> yeah. And so um, making that better and more automated would be great. Well, that's the, it plays into the, the question six is how is how important is it to support the Power Platform community. So whatever you call them, citizen developers, makers, champions, but supporting those people within your organization, is that something that you guys prioritize? Yeah, that's what we're doing now. That's um, that's our, the gist of our, our, our initial foray into governance in general. But um, we're identifying the people that have already gone out there and clicked the buttons and built stuff. And then we're connecting them or inviting, inviting them into a community on Teams and we will have regular um, updates through teams of new things. We have our list of known uh, uh, developed things out there that people can peruse. Uh, there's been some communication among uh, leads at different colleges. The way our organization set up, we've got our you know 16 colleges or 16 nearly identical business units. Mm-hmm. And so there's a lot of overlap of everything, not just Microsoft stuff. So, um, being able to to level that and to um, make more visibility into all that is going to be is what we're after, and the community is making making strides on that. Is there anything? Do you guys do anything to like recognize and reward individuals for solutions that are you know really effective that are helping improve things? A couple of things. I mean, the, the built-in praise and teams and things like that, but also um, we we are also we have regularly gone out um, and given from the system office uh, what we call technology summits at different colleges on all, all things technology. And thing, one thing we've done recently is we've identified someone at the colleges at that college we're visiting who's done something in Power Platform, and we ask them to to be a part of this presentation. So that they're presenting on the solution that they built locally. You know, then we come in and support them and elevate them mm-hmm. so that they're known there, but all those events at those colleges can be attended by anybody else at any other college. So there's some crossover there as well. Mm-hmm. And that goes beyond just the, the maker community that goes to the user community. I was like, oh, they built this? I thought yeah. it was IT. Yeah. So yeah. there's light bulbs going off everywhere. <laughs> yeah. A couple of pl- companies I've worked for, we did, which was always successful, was doing like the lunch and learn. And we do mm-hmm. it like every Friday and somebody comes in and, and like one of, one of the mistakes people made like about it, they, it was thinking, oh, it has to be completed. And like, no, sometimes it was, they came in with a partially built solution, says, here's what I'm doing. Here's what I've done. This has helped on this. I'm still struggling with this area. And it would pull in people from other parts of the company. It would be like, hey, I did something similar. Or, hey, here's how we approach that. And so sometimes it, it it's, it, you, you look at it, we're all same company. You know, we're mm-hmm. trying to solve the problems. If you can help people in other areas, with your knowledge and you may take away new learning as well mm-hmm. be that process it it recognizes the people and and that it's a reward in itself that recognition right. sometimes for trying to make things better mm-hmm. and and then if they do make things better succeed at that you know um having some other reward program in place i know that we had um like at Microsoft, they have like their gold star with there's a mm-hmm. cash award for things and certain things. Other companies where there's recommend recommendations, they give out gift cards and other things. Or sometimes it's just that you get called out in mm-hmm. the all hands meetings, you know, things mm-hmm. like that. All of those things, it, it's uh, it, if you want to incentivize people to look for ways to improve the business without just saying, Hey, this should be part of everybody's jobs. We should always all be looking for ways to improve. It's like, uh, yeah, culturally, you should do something beyond that. Mm-hmm. That expectation. There's there's opportunity for us specifically going a little bit tangent on this. Um, we are embarking on a organization wide lean program, like an intentional. Um, we've already sort of we've dabbled in it for years, and some of our colleges actually teach it. 
um, but we're actually internalizing it very intentionally now. And so we're out there looking at all of our processes, trying to find you know, improvements and efficiencies and eliminate waste. So people, that's going to be part of our culture and that's becoming more and more of what we do every day. So if we can, on the back end of that, understand that this platform can help automate and display data when you need it and <laughs> things that um, are, are going to be key to whatever process comes out of it, I think that's going to actually help grow. So it's an exciting time for us, I think. Yeah, no, it's a, yeah, like for organizations that start to kind of feel their way, it's it's healthy to be talking about what should be our process, you know, the, the governance question, but also the community building, how do we support people to do more? And uh, it's always healthy to have that conversation. This is part of the broader topic around uh, you know, employee experience, and mm -hmm. it's it's great to see it. I mean, we're not going to get in talk Viva or anything like, around that, but I just I think it's great that uh, and maybe the pandemic helped. Not maybe mm -hmm. it definitely helped drive more customer, more right. companies to think, hey, what is we we need to change the way that we work, mm -hmm. and you know we're we're getting we're seeing burnout. We're seeing that people don't feel appreciated. That they're not being recognized when they go above and beyond. Like, what can we do different mm -hmm. to make this a better work environment? And so it's I think this all folds within that. It's part of that same broader mm -hmm. conversation. Yeah. Well, the final question here: mm -hmm. What other governance advice would you give to an organization that is starting its power platform journey? So any any other. Uh, like painful lessons learned or anything else that you would share? Um, I can reiterate everything I've already said, but I think one of the things that um, when we started looking at this and uh, the platform, one of the things uh, that sort of rung a bell with me is like, or, or I could see the writing on the wall um, was how we needed to get a handle on understanding uh, the scope of of any given um, solution, um, as well as making people understand that as, as well. So, for again, for our organization, where with a lot of turnover, a lot of transient people, um, the we had this uh, same issue with OneDrive and content in OneDrive, <laughs> uh, and email obviously. Uh, when their account goes away, all that stuff goes away. All their accumulated work and knowledge and documents and work life. Poof. Um, now you add a potentially business critical process that could go poof. <laughs> um, so we, it, the writing was on the wall. It's like this is kind of similar to the, the OneDrive dilemma in our, our account um, uh, temporariness that is prevalent in our organization like ours. So understanding that from our perspective, but also helping users understand that and then telling them there's a way to make sure that uh, that doesn't happen. Uh, follow these these guidances that we're putting out, um, use the service count, um, et cetera. Um, that was our, our, it was my personal uh, biggest focus in developing, thinking about how we can approach governance. Mm -hmm. um, and then also talk to them about, again, not governance, not using the G word, but talk about uh, how in ways that make it more relatable and more um, just generally more uh, friendly. So oh, I love the um, always love the the example of or the analogy of bowling. And like when you're learning how to bowl, you put up the bumpers so that you don't roll a gutter. <laughs> you're guaranteed at least hit a pin, hopefully. Um, so that's what that's what the governance is in the background is those those guardrails to help you hit the pins um, and it's it makes it easier to do the right thing and harder to do the wrong thing. So yeah. that's that's if you get people to think about that, then they can buy into best practices, the guidelines, the frameworks or governance or whatever you're going to call it. Yep. <clears throat> Isn't it funny how we're, uh, you know, cer certain words that we can't say that right. uh, have certain connotations. It's all this the same thing. It's uh -huh. the I always talk about that, you know, go governance. It's 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 the palm olive moment. Like we're, you're you're soaking in it right now. <laughs> right. Call it whatever you want. It's like yeah. your hand is still in. I'm just so dating myself with my these commercial references for folks that don't know. 
Pommel is an old dishwasher soap. I, it's still around, you know, and yeah. it's green. I remember Madge. I remember Madge, yeah. Yeah. It apparently <laughs> softens your, your hands, you know. But, yeah. uh, <laughs> well, Matt, really appreciate your time. And, and thanks again for participating in the Tweet Jams, as always. I know that you're a regular uh, participant in those. And so uh, looking forward to uh, having you participate in future events. Great. Thank you. Thank you for putting, putting them together. They're always fun. Uh, I always try to make them, but thank you.